what are the challenges facing businesses today, especially in the down economy, and uh, how does open source, uh, how can open source help? We'd like to start off. Oh, it's easy, right? <laughs> your budget's being cut. You're the CIO. Your budget's being cut. You have to do more with less. And your major proprietary software providers are putting up the prices, which they feel they can get away with, because they still want to grow their revenue, right? So, um, and I, I, you know, I, I talked to a lot of my old CIO peers, and there's just a tremendous amount of pressure. And you know, you're having to cut back on consultants or eliminate them. You're having to lay people off. You're having to make servers last much longer. No new laptops. All these, all these various things. So, anything that enables you to reduce the cost of providing your existing systems is a great thing. And there are now viable open source alternatives to established expensive things like application servers and databases and all the rest of it. But then there's the kind of cost of the new projects, right? Because many times new projects have a big chunk of professional services, but they also have a big chunk of license fee, a big chunk of hardware. And to the extent that you can actually compress the budget by taking the license fee stuff out of that and saying we're only going to pay on a variable cost support subscription model, you can take a whole bunch of projects that otherwise would have to wait three years and you can get them back on the schedule. Potentially even have an edge over your competitors who yeah. are doing that. So. Yeah, because you, you make a point there. Businesses are competing more now. It's not like the competition's got less, right? You know, it's become more. So the pressure to deliver is higher. It's just the uh, the resources to do it have gone down, and the big players are you know, quite willing to squeeze you to take more money from you, even if you have even if you've laid 15% of your staff off, their bill will go up. And you know, you're trying to find a way out of that is a big, big challenge. So uh, I guess uh, Dave, Mike, uh, have you guys yeah. seen that in, in your businesses as well? Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's um, crisis is opportunity is one of those things where, where um, I think if you go back to what we talked about earlier, you know, that leveling playing field reasons. Um, when everything's hunky dory, you know, you get to market fast. Well, what's the first thing I can buy? <laughs> Grab it. You know, and mm -hmm. you don't worry about money as much because it's all about getting the market. Or you know, things are going great. We're just counting the cash. You get lazy and you just go. So I mean, and that's maybe a big oversimplification, <laughs> but there is a certain human nature to this, right? And so you know, your buddy works for X company over here, and he's been taking care of me all this <laughs> time, and no one's really putting the pressure on you. Just keep on going. So, um, but suddenly the crunch comes and. Now you got to get markets at the same time. What you got to do with half the budget? Now what are you going to do? And and so or you know you got to keep doing the same kinds of things. So so it, it's it's I think it is that it just forces those competitive forces that come into play. And yeah. that's really what it makes yeah. it happen. It doesn't really. And the nice thing is that because open source is so new, I mean, and because it does bring about an inherent competitive advantage for the for the companies that figure out how to take advantage of it. It just speeds up the process of um, adoption of open source technology, whether it's directly in the form of actually getting open source and using it as a consumer, or whether that's purchasing services around that, or whether that's buying proprietary products that happen to have 90% open source under the hood. Um, it's just that companies figured out that, hey, there's a lot of this commodity and I don't need to build it. So, you know, I, I just think that it just forces that competitive process to happen. And um, and then, you know, if that becomes a, a more of an established norm, you know, Linux servers as, as uh, a commonplace thing in our environment is very common now. Um, prior to the dot-com boom, maybe not. So, you know, it maybe maybe there's a bit of a linkage there. Mm -hmm. Certainly, in some uh, there are industries that uh, open source is creeping up to 20% of market share. So, uh, yeah. Mozilla and Firefox, you know, the web browser space, uh, netbooks, uh, open source mobile de uh, embedded development, so Android and uh, uh, Open Moco and another platform, uh, other platforms are creeping in and establishing themselves. The open source PBX market is doing quite well. Yeah. So it's the same, I think, same thing's happening. I think one, something people don't really realize is open source is a tremendously competitive space. It's very Darwin like. I mean, open source projects come in and collide and die. If you don't produce something good, it's gone. You know, so there's no, it's ruthless. And so, um, whereas you, you can't put the marketing glaze over it to make it work, <laughs> right? I mean, if nobody contributes and nobody does anything and no one uses it, it's gone. And so, so, so from that standpoint, there's this competition that goes on in open source, and it's just wild. And you got all these different projects, and the cream rises to the top. And Drupal is an example of, hey, 
exposed to the phone. And so guess what? You've got a great CMS there. And so when the point comes of, whoa, I've got to spend X dollars to here, already this competitive process is brought. It's an open source technology. So.